Let's be honest, 2021 has been quite the year for everyone. In this podcast, we are looking back on everything that has happened in our little decluttering world. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organising your home. Now here are your hosts, Ingrid Janssen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. Sometimes it can be easy to forget what we've achieved. We're all about sharing the wins and you have all been there this year through challenges, masterclasses, podcasts and in our membership. So let's jog your memories with all that we've done and what you have achieved. Now, Leslie, (laughs) for those of you who are watching this, before we start to talk about the podcast, we need to talk... (laughs) <laughs> I know. I think it's fair to say that one of us is feeling more jovial than the other today, Ingrid. Am I right? Because before we started recording this podcast, Ingrid, who's very dictatorial, so don't don't believe that she isn't, said, we need to wear sparkly tops because we're recording on YouTube. And I was like, I don't want to wear a sparkly top. I don't want, I'm not really a sparkly top kind of gal. And she just took, didn't take no for an answer and went and put it on. And so I got shamed into changing. So for anybody who's watching, we are here with our lovely Happy New Year wintry backgrounds. And we have our <laughs> sparkly tops on just for you for this Happy New Year celebratory podcast. I know, I know. It's the 31st of December and we thought we have to do something fun. And I think putting my Happy New Year headband on was taking it a step too far. But I was like, let's put on something cheerful so that people who are watching this on YouTube go, oh, that's nice. They've actually dressed up for the occasion. So that's kind of how it all started with the background. And then I kind of indeed kind of (laughs) made Leslie wear a sparkly top, which I think is well worth it. So thank you, Leslie, for making me happy. You're so welcome. And we've got these lovely backgrounds as well. You totally need to go look at YouTube because you're missing out on all the fun. And can I just say, hidden behind Ingrid's sparkly top, there is a festive greeting. Ingrid, would you like to move out of the way and show that greeting? Yes. So, well, let's, let me see if I can go actually the right way. There we go. And it says, Mutlu Yila. Yeah. <laughs> because... We couldn't find one that was appropriate in English. And so we went for the Turkish version of Happy New Year. But luckily, it's sitting firmly behind English tray, so we're okay. Yeah. Say much you yila, just in case we do have any Turkish people watching. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, now we've got the background and the whole uh, sparkly top situation out of the way. Let's talk podcasts first. Because another whole year of weekly episodes i mean i know we're like every time we're like wow we made it again how can we still be talking on our podcast but we just love it and we keep thinking of things we want to talk to you on a weekly basis so yes so what we wanted to do before we get started we wanted to talk about which podcast it's very you know we look at who's listening and we look at we don't look at who's listening actually that's not true we look at how many people are listening and which of our episodes are the most popular. And it's always a really interesting thing for us to look at at the end of the year. So unsurprisingly, to be fair, there were three podcasts that really hit the mark this year in terms of the number of listens. So the most listened to podcast, this is an interesting one, was episode 138, How to Keep Up Momentum When Decluttering. It's so interesting, isn't it, Ingrid? Because that's one of the things. Everyone starts in earnest with all this gusto. And then kind of starts to tail off and starts to lose that kind of impetus to actually declutter. And so how to keep up momentum when decluttering was a great podcast, the most listened to podcast of the year. So if you're struggling, it's a tough one now because you're not really probably going to be decluttering today on New Year's Eve. It's probably not going to be high on your agenda You probably will start the new year with gusto, hopefully carry on, depending on what you learn with us and more about that later. 
But actually, if you get a few months into the year and you're struggling, do revisit that podcast 138, How to Keep Up Momentum, because some great hints and tips in there, isn't there, Ingrid? Yes, Leslie, you're so right. The keeping up momentum is is just one of the hardest thing in decluttering. I think a lot of people, what a lot of people do is they start far too big. They think, I'm going to tackle this whole room in this weekend because I've had enough of it. And then halfway through, they're like, oh, wow, what have I started? This is far more work than I thought. I've completely underestimated this project. Uh, I've, I've bitten up far more than I can chew. This is like, this is not going in the right direction. But then they plow on and plow on. They forget to kind of have a break, eat and drink something, and they completely tire themselves out. And at the end, they go... Well, I'm never going to do that again. And that experience then stays with people. And then why would you be motivated to then go, let me do another area, let me do another room. So it is so important to really think about what you want to declutter, what is on your list, and how can you break down this project? It's all about breaking it down. And one of our members said it beautifully um, in our own internal message board. And she was like, I'm constantly hearing Ingrid and Leslie's voice in my head. How can, how can I break down this project? How can I break it down? And she's having tremendous success because she's doing one drawer, one cupboard, one category of stuff at a time. And that is why she's absolutely now on fire and doing fantastic work and on, on her decluttering. I think if you if you break it down, as you're saying, Grid, what that means is that you will absolutely get to the finished point. And the finished point is the bit that then you enjoy the fruits of your labor and then it motivates you on to the next stage. And so breaking it down into smaller projects is absolutely critical. And we talk all about that in that podcast. So do, do listen into it if you've not listened to it already or refresh it. There's no reason to just listen once. Listen lots and lots of times. And it's interesting then that the, the, the next podcast that we wanted to talk about is also along the same vein, which was 10 decluttering projects that you can do in an hour or less. So people like this idea of a small decluttering project. And that was super popular, wasn't it, Ingrid? Yeah, I think it really inspired people to kind of go, oh, gosh, yeah, I kind of wouldn't have realized that I could could do this. And I think we really kind of got the energy flowing with people and they were like, oh, this is great. I want to try that out this weekend. So that I think why, why it resonated really, because we know that some things it's oh everybody else says, oh, just do five minutes here and five minutes there. But when you want to do a little bit of more than that, you can't do that in five minutes. So I think the hour or less really help people to go, actually, that feels doable. Yeah, definitely. And there's some good good hints and tips in there. And it's very actionable, isn't it? I think some of the time with decluttering, and certainly if you listen to podcasts, people are membership who watch our videos, sometimes you've got to get to that implementation stage. So within a decluttering, you need to do the learning, however that is, you know, um, listen to a podcast, watching a video, watching a course, whatever that is, and however you learn. But then you need to schedule in time to actually implement. The light bulbs go on during the learning phase, and then obviously like, right, and this is the time that I'm actually going to to do it and that's why episode 161 really hit home with people and was the second most listened to podcast this year yes and the third one we really wanted to mention was actually our podcast 150 that is the podcast also when we said let's go on youtube and let's show people how we chat into the camera and not let's not only do audio but let's do video as well and so it's nice to see leslie that it's actually made our top three because it's all about the decluttering myths and busting those decluttering myths yeah it's also the one where we had to start wearing sparkly tops for podcasts <laughs> isn't it ingrid <laughs> Just to remind you of things. Yeah, I could. We, before that, we could completely do our podcast with a makeup less and yeah. just having turned up. And now we have to actually dress up for the occasion. So yeah, uh, I, every- don't th- I don't think <laughs> Leslie we ever turned up in pajamas. I don't think we've ever ever. I mean, yeah. a lot of people say, "Oh, I work from home now." We're like jogging bottoms and pajamas and I'm like wow I wouldn't feel like I was actually going to work in between brackets so I don't think we've ever shown up in pajamas for each other have we <laughs> we have not we have not but we have shown up with no makeup and I'm not sure I would go live to the world without yeah. a face of makeup so just saying that but anyway that's <laughs> just me and just my personal thing um but yeah and you know episode 150 was a real kind of milestone for us as well wasn't it in terms of 
Yeah, it's quite a big deal. It's quite a lot of work, isn't it, to do a podcast and everything every week. We absolutely love it. We love the sense of community. We love the feedback from you guys from the podcast. And actually, it was around the same time as we did episode 150 that all of a sudden our podcast kind of got catapulted into not stardom, but we'd like to think it was stardom. <laughs> sounds quite nice really to say catapulted into stardom Um, not quite there yet but our podcast did eke its way into the top one percent of podcasts worldwide which is like we're still completely astonished every time we mention it because this is a very niche podcast not everyone wants to listen about decluttering because so many people have got that completely nailed and they're fine but obviously there's a huge amount of people that do have this problem and so maybe it's not quite as niche as we think so when we found out we were in the top 1%, we're hugely grateful for everyone for listening. We never thought in a million years when we sat there in October 2018 that we would get to that place, did we, Ingrid? So it's nice that episode 150 is in there. And, of course, if you've not tuned in on YouTube to watch us and that's the kind of thing that you like to do, you can listen as well. A podcast is designed to be listened to, but we know a lot of people like to watch as well for that extra little spark. So do tune in to our YouTube channel, the Declutter Hub YouTube channel. Is that what it's called, Ingrid? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Declutter <laughs> YouTube channel. So, yeah, tune in and watch us. Yes, and we're just like, like Leslie said, we're super grateful that you are showing up every week and that you're listening to us. And you know what? We just want to continue with our chatting on our podcast. So if you think to yourself, you know what? I've been listening to these girls all the time. Leave us a review. Let us know how you feel about the podcast. It is so nice to read them. And it's really good because then other people think, oh, that sounds good. I'm going to listen in too. So leave us a review. Um, on your podcast player or leave us a review or here on YouTube or leave us a review in the comments on our website. Tell us what do you enjoy? I think, you know, it's interesting actually, because of course it will encourage other people to listen to podcasts, which we want because we want to spread the word and make sure that other people don't feel overwhelmed with clutter as well. But personally, you know, we get our reviews in on a Monday, don't we? It's really nice for us, <laughs> for people to say, oh, I really love that podcast. Because some, because podcasting is kind of, it's not a two-way thing, really. We just put our information out there and you listen. And of course, we get comments and things. But it's really nice to get those reviews to see what's resonating with you. Because that makes us be better and choose the topics appropriately. So a review would be super lovely. And actually, at the beginning of 2022, how how nice would that be if we got like, hundreds of reviews in Ingrid that would be amazing (laughs) nice start to 2022 so please do leave us a review we would love it yeah well Leslie we've chatted about the podcast but I think we need to talk a little bit about 2021 in general don't we it was quite the year it was quite the year wasn't it yeah it was quite the year yeah I think when we recorded the 2020 going into 2021 podcast It would be interesting to listen back to that because I think that we felt that, of course, COVID dominates. But did we think we'd still be in this place a year later uh, where we are now? I suspect not, actually. I think personally, uh, many of you who have been with us for this full year know that it was an absolute nightmare because on the 28th of December 2020, would that be? (laughs) I don't even know my years. Um, My husband went into um, hospital with COVID and we had a very, very tough run with a ventilator and a coma. Thankfully, eight weeks later or 10 months later, but after eight weeks, he came out of hospital. And, you know, a few months later, he's definitely on the mend. But it was quite the start of the year. So I think that's meant quite an unsettling year for me personally. But I know that other people, even people who've not gone through that kind of um, trauma, it's still been a really unsettling year, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, oh, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people thought, you know what, when we had kind of 2020 behind us, we're like, okay, we're back, you know, on the, on the forwards and, and, and we've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forward. And other parts of the world have been in nearly constant lockdowns. We have, especially the the last couple of months, been feeling a little bit more normal here in the UK, but we're very aware of, you know, COVID still being around, uh, people wearing masks, we're talking about boosters. I mean, other parts of the world are still in a lockdown, they're in the longest lockdown ever. 
And it's just been such a weird year. And I think none of us really last year would have thought where we are now, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's still really tough for a lot of people. And, you know, anxiety levels are through the roof with a lot of people. Yeah. But on the flip side to that, I think there have been positives that have come with that, particularly in the way that people are working. I think that it's forced a change. I mean, there's something crazy, isn't there? Some statistics where um, in the online or the digital world, people have been forced to move on forward seven years in that kind of year or 18 month period, haven't they? With sort of development and people have had to look at the constraints that they've had and think and figure out a different way of working. Yeah. And for a lot of people, now we're getting to that stage where people can choose. And so people can go back into the office if they want to, or people can stay working from home if you're working that is. And so I think that's forced a change, which a lot of people have found quite welcome because depending on your individual circumstances, to be able to work from home a couple of days a week or all week or whatever is a very positive change for a lot of people but it does come with things that you need to shift and readdress the balance at home as well. And that's what we've seen. We've done a lot of talks this year, haven't we, Ingrid? And, you know, for kind of corporate organisations and things. And it definitely has been about that hybrid working model where you work from home some of, some of the week and you work in the office some of the week. And that's been interesting, isn't it, to talk about and productivity and what that means. Yeah. And I think it's interesting as well, Leslie, I think when... COVID happened in 2020, we kind of temporarily set up solutions at home for working from home. And then it for a while, it seemed overall oh, going to go back to the office. And then, of course, we didn't. And then we kind of started working from home again. I think we're now all realizing this hybrid model or either working partly from home or fully from home. We really now need to think long term about our desks, our computers, our chairs. Where are we working? Can we sustain working from the kitchen table or do we actually have to really find a space somewhere in our house if we have the room to set up a proper desk somewhere? And I think that is kind of what happened in 2021. I think we were all kind of flying by the seat of our pants a little bit last year thinking, oh, well, we're all working from home. What are we doing here? And I think this year kind of the more the, the, the notion came, oh, wow, this is taking longer and actually I actually quite enjoy working from home a bit more and not being on the commute for such a long time. And But how am I going to set up myself more properly so I'm not having to put my computer on an ironing board, for example? You know, you have to really think about t m making it sustainable for you to be to work from home. Definitely. And I think the other thing that was interesting about the year was in 2020, there was a flurry of activity in the decluttering world. So people had the opportunity and had the time to declutter. Well, some people, not everybody. And so decluttering was very much part of 2020. What a lot of people realized, so there was there's two ways that people went. So first of all, the people that are decluttered in 2020, this is our experience and it's definitely a generalization and not everybody, by the way. A lot of people that did that flurry of activity in 2020, got to 2021 and realized that it was starting to slip back into, they were starting to slip back into bad, bad habits or the clutter was starting to creep back. So I think that's interesting. There was, an, there was another kind of set of people who realized that they set out with great intentions. They had the time, they had the opportunity, but actually it wasn't the time or the opportunity that was needed. It was the motivation and the inspiration that they needed. So whilst people set out with good intentions, I think, a lot of people have been a little bit disappointed by what that has created. That's our experience, isn't it, Ingrid? Yeah, I think what we've seen more this year is the massive impact that 2020 had on people mentally and, 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 and physically and being at home all the time with or without younger children and the changes that that all brought about. And I think we've really underestimated how much of an impact that had suddenly being home all the time and all the time we all we, you know, a lot of people said i just need six clear weeks to do all of this and then my house is going to be great 
And what they found out is like, we had the time back in 2020 and we still didn't do it, but how do I then move on from that? And because of course we've been so up and down with lockdown, not a lockdown, we're back in a lockdown, we're not in the lockdown. People just didn't know whether they were coming or going. And then I think they started to realize, wow, it is much more than I need to have a weekend. It's changing those lifetime habits and daily things that you need to do and thinking it through and starting to understand the emotions that you have connected to your stuff to to move forward. And the good news is we have something that will help with that. So let's go to the little break. Are you worn down with clutter control in your life? Have you tried to declutter hundreds of times but get stuck? Do you struggle to even know where to start because every single room has clutter? Come and join our free five-day challenge starting on Monday, the 3rd of January and learn how to reset your home with us. Go to declutterhub.com forward slash RYH to find out more and sign up. Hi, everyone. Welcome back after your little break. Now, yes, Leslie, let's talk about what we can do to help. Yes, at the Reset Your Home Challenge is back and we love it, don't we, Ingrid? And so it's so fabulous. Loads of light bulb moments. You're sitting in a community of people who are all inspired and motivated to take action. So if you've never done one of our Reset Your Home Challenges before, or indeed, if it's time for a little refresher, do make sure you join in. Now, it's interesting, isn't it, Ingrid? Because a lot of people have come back to us saying that they did the Reset Your Home Challenge in January and then have had that tail off it's really important that you keep that momentum up that we were talking about when we were talking about episode 138 earlier you need to keep that momentum going you can't just do this short burst of kind of yes I'm fired up sometimes you need a little bit more motivation inspiration community to actually keep you on the right track don't you Absolutely. And you can see that our members who have been, who joined after our Research Your Home Challenge have had just such a great year feeling part of something very special. And I think a lot of our members really love the community of fellow members who struggle with clutter all over the world and like, I'm not alone. This is so nice to know I'm not alone, but also to help each other to celebrate the wins that they're having and like, oh, you're doing so well. I love it. And you're inspiring me to do something in my own home. And I love how you did that. And it's so nice to see that you've done so well. And it's just such nice things to see that instead of always kind of going, oh, I haven't done that yet. Or, oh, I can't do it to celebrate those wins and look at the positive side and looking at the steps forward. One of our members recently joined us maybe six months ago, something like that, started out in earnest and then something happened. You know, life gets in the way, doesn't it? Something happened that took her off track. And she's like, the only thing I've managed to do is this one room this year and I feel really disappointed. I'm like, But she's motivated to continue and that's the main thing. And, you know, the light bulbs have gone on. She's been in the forum that whole time. So while she's not been doing the doing, she's been doing the learning. And that's the important thing, isn't it, Ingrid? So, you know, don't be disheartened if life gets in the way and you can't carry on because you can pick that up. But it's important to keep yourself immersed in the decluttering world, whether it's through the podcast, whether it's in our membership and really keep on keep that high on your list of things to do. I think that's super critical. I think another couple of things that we did during the year, which really hit home well with people, we did our Managing Mementos Masterclass back in um, March, I think, wasn't it, Ingrid? And where we really delved deep onto those sentimental items. That's where we're really getting down to the nitty gritty of those emotions and habits. So loads and loads of people loved the Managing Mementos Masterclass and then subsequently bought our Sorting Out Sentimental course, which takes you in much, much deeper again. So that was a huge success for loads of people who have finally managed to get through the sentimental stuff that they've got in their house and really focus on quality over quantity, which is what it's all about. Yes, Leslie, and beside the Managing Mementos Masterclass, we did also did a Purge Your Paperwork Masterclass all about, well, it's in the name, paperwork. And we really saw lots of light bulbs going off of people going, you know what, I'm always so afraid of paperwork, but I don't need to be. I know what I need to do now. I know how I can move past this and get my paperwork under control. Yeah, Ingrid, so they were two hugely impactful masterclasses for some people as well, and they really managed to step to with their paperwork and with their sentimental items. And of course, those two courses that we've just mentioned are available in our shop. So just go to declutterhub.com 
forward slash shop and you will find all the details that you need for those if you want to get started on your sentimental or your paperwork items. Now, Leslie, besides the challenges that we've done back in 2021 and indeed the master classes, we've also not been twiddling our thumbs, have we? <laughs> I know. So we were just trying to think, weren't we, about other things, other initiatives that we've done this year that we've really enjoyed personally. And so, of course, we have done so much in the membership this year. We've added like tons and tons of new material courses. We did a huge routines course for everybody, which takes you through daily, weekly and seasonal routines to keep up that decluttering, to keep on top of your houses. Our members absolutely love the routines courses that we did and the project paperwork that's all sitting in the membership as well, which is fantastic. So it's been a big year for us of content creation, as it's called. But I think we also, as I mentioned before, we've also kind of gone a little bit into the corporate world as well. So we've had, you know, corporate companies asking for us to speak at their events, which has been really cool. And I think the other thing which we have loved all year long is doing coaching calls with people. So you can book a one-to-one -one coaching call with us if you want to get stuck into something specific in your area and really get down to the nitty gritty of your decluttering and get personal input from Ingrid and I. And it's so nice to be able to do that, Ingrid, isn't it? And to get to really see into the heart of people's houses, into the heart of people's habits and emotions, what's holding them back, what their situation is what storage dilemmas they've got, you know, what it is that's really bugging them that they can't get over. So those co coaching calls have been amazing and the progress that people have, been, have made. So yes, we love doing them, but we love doing them because people make such great progress from them. It's a bit of a sort of chicken and egg, isn't it? Doing the coaching calls and also being in contact with all our members and our membership is, is my one of my favorite bits. I absolutely love that. And I just love reading all their stories and, and reaching out to them and, Yes, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And what I also think, Leslie, what we shouldn't forget is we also did a lot for uh, the professional organizing world itself. So I was actually quite chuffed to be asked to be a guest on the NAPO podcast, which is um, the, the organization in, in the US that is um, the National Association of Productivity Organizers. They've got a podcast too, and we were invited to be a guest on their show. So I thought that was fantastic. And um, we also uh, were speakers at a conference for the organizers in Canada as well. So yes, we did a lot of big things this year. A lot of nail biting moments. Will all the technology work? Will it all go well? And um, yeah, it was really, really fun to do. You know, you're so right, Ingrid. It's an absolute honor to be able to, to be asked to speak in our own little world of professional organizers, isn't it as well? So yeah, it was a real honor. It was a nice thing to do. And okay. So it's time to close off this podcast, I think, because everyone needs to go and celebrate their New Year's Eve, by the way. So let's finish off by talking about our learning from this year. So Ingrid, what's the biggest learning that you have had this year? So yes, Leslie, my learning for this year, well, it's actually a bit, I think, twofold. First of all, I think I knew I could work hard, but I think 2021 has taken the trophy of most hours behind this computer. Um, yes, lots and lots of hours and time put in. So yeah, that definitely nailing it, doing lots of work, absolutely loving it and still loving everything that has to do with decluttering and organizing. And secondly, I think for me is how much I missed my family. Um, through COVID, of course, I couldn't see them. And over the summer, I was finally able to go on holiday and also uh, connected to a visit to my family and lots of family and friends in the Netherlands, which was just wonderful. And I think I suddenly really realized how, how, how I, knew, I knew they were important to me. Of course I did, but I think not being able to see them and then finally being able to see them, that was really for me the icing on the cake for this year. You're so right, Ingrid, family is so important. And I think it's, you know, this year has been a tough year for us as a family. And I think, you know, we were a strong family before, but I think we've become an even stronger family unit. Friends as well have been absolutely fantastic. And it's just important to know that you've got people that you can rely on when the chips are down a little bit. But equally, I think what I've learned is that you can't take things for granted. I think all of us have had a little bit of that. You know, we know 
the the rug can get pulled from under us, whether that's suddenly getting COVID and being stuck inside for two weeks or whether it's somebody close to you getting poorly or anything like that. We shouldn't take these things for granted. We should live, live life to the full and we should try and redress the balance a little bit. So I think that's where I am. Yes, we have had a busy year work-wise, but I think 2022 for me will be definitely focused on looking at getting that balance right between family, friends and work. It's hard really for us because we love our work so much and so it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> so it feels like fun. And so we kind of get the balance out of kilter sometimes as well. But I think for me, that is the learning from 2021 and what I want to take forward into 2022. Yes, listeners. So what is your learning from 2021 on this last day of the year? Have you been able to think back already a little bit and kind of go, wow, let me put some stuff into place in my head what's happened what were the positives what was hard how do i want to do that different next year and maybe you've realized yes ingrid and leslie you're right i have been kind of decluttering and then falling off the wagon and i really want to do it and it's a priority because i know how many benefits it can bring me to have a decluttered home and of course you're more than welcome to join us next week we're starting on monday with the reset your home challenge and we absolutely adore it and we can't wait to see so many of you there so come and join us if you actually really want to start 2022 with a clean slate full of new positive energy and think, you know what, 2021 is done. We're looking forward to 2022. So wishing you all a very happy new year. We are back as always next week in a brand new year with a brand new podcast. And we can't wait to see you then. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week.